If you've been following the channel for some time, you know that X-Men and just comic books in general are on life support. They've driven so many fans away over the last 10 years. Just talking about Marvel Comics, DC Comics are definitely in that game right now. I know it just gets so frustrating when you have a comic book channel. You want to be excited about stuff. But I got this interview from Adventures in Board Taste with Steve Fox, a very obscure, unknown writer in the X-Men office just personifies everything wrong with Marvel Comics and X-Men. And you can see that the guy is pretty much self-absorbed. He's not there to write good Marvel stories. He's there to write good stories about himself and his own community. And you can also see, just through his answers, he doesn't really know a lot about the characters or their history. And that's why all the stories are screwed up and the continuity never makes sense. Reading through his interview here, like I couldn't even get upset. There was nothing new. There was nothing interesting. All it was was just the most cliched and expected answers for current year Marvel writer in the X office. My community, growing up, closet, blah, 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 blah. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Can you be any more generic? Yeah, he's very on trend, especially for the X-Men office. If you look at the people that work there, like their numbers are all out of whack when it comes to representation. I'll tell you that. This is the big question that just... It just screams why everyone is walking away from Marvel Comics. They asked Steve Fox because he's doing X-Men Annual 2022. What kind of stigma do mutants like Angelica face for not immediately getting on board with Krakoa? This is what Steve had to say. It's always tricky to discuss mutants in the terms of real-world marginalized communities. I am a gay man, and I have identified with the mutant struggle and cause, but I also can't shoot laser beams out of my eyes. Maybe homophobes would have more to worry about if I could. But it's never going to be a one-to-one -one match for that reason. I don't think the differences preclude drawing on real-world experiences for comparison here. And it's very true and valid that many queer people, for instance, don't always feel welcomed in queer spaces. This can be for all sorts of reasons. You don't meet normative appearance standards. You don't share a lot of interest in shared activities. You came out late or it isn't safe for you to come out so you feel disconnected or behind on queer culture. The individuals you've connected with are jerks, and your first brush with community is tainted as a result. The list goes on and on and is ever-shifting. When I was younger, there were times I took a very ignorant pride in not being like other gays, and then I grew up and was super embarrassed by these moments like that. That question was all about Krakoa and the X-Men, but it was all about him, because it's not about writing good stories. It's all about showing how Krakoa is like Apparently, the gay community and people that feel like they don't belong there now. If we could get more 2022, I make everything about me narcissism. I, I don't know how you do it. It's him saying, I don't know fuck all about what I'm supposed to be writing. So I'm going to write this other thing over here that I otherwise sort of know about. And also, I feel like he's taking a personal shot at uh, Josh McDonald in this. Yeah, I love the point at the end where he's like, but then at the end, I realized it was better to be part of the hive and just give in and do everything the community told me I had to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I used to take pride in being an individual and not conforming to the group. But once I got older, I could afford like hell and I realized I was wrong. Like That's like the lamest stance I've ever seen on anything. Uh, yeah, that's about what I'd expect. Uh, someone with absolutely no personality, no individualism, just wants to be absorbed into the fucking Borg because that's what Krakoa is now. It's a but high that's mind. not what the X-Men are, Doc. They've always been outcasts. They've always had their own personalities. Sure, they came together for a common cause, but they never really got along all the time. You know, there's always a little infighting and stuff like that because Wolverine would never give up who he was to be a part of the X-Men. Cyclops, despite being the leader, still had his own agendas and was who he was, true to himself as an X-Men. And so were all the other characters. And that's why we're getting lame-ass, bland X-Men stories, Doc. The X-Men always maintained a great de degree of individuality. Hell, there were years at a time where there was an X-Men title, but no X-Men team because they had broken up and each issue was maybe focusing on a different character as they went on kind of solo avenge adventures for a long period of time before they all got brought back together and they realized that their differences a made them stronger and b were needed in order to function as a cohesive unit when you have nothing but sameness it is fucking boring another issue that i mentioned earlier you can tell steve fox doesn't really know much about firestar 
the actual star of the comic book that he's writing, this is what he was asked. What do you hope readers take away from the Firestar focused annual? I'm hoping readers who've gotten worked up in the discourse surrounding her election will have a little more perspective on Angelica, who she is and how she got here. You don't have to come away from it liking her, but I hope you get a little more than you did before you read it. She's not a mutant resisting fascist cop. She's a proven hero whose career hasn't often had an X in front of it. Whoever said that she was a mutant resisting fascist cop, Doc? Like, where does that come from? I have no idea what in the hell he's even talking about here. No clue. Yeah, and I don't think he does either. He's just... Is this because... I? You know what? I think I figured it out. His only understanding of Firestar is from Spider-Man and his amazing friends, where she was basically acting as sort of a cop along with Spider-Man and Iceman in that story. So maybe that's where he gets his understanding of Firestar from. So you know it's not going to be a very good exploration of the character because he doesn't really have a good foundation and understanding of the character is just kind of bad stuff there. He also talks about her interacting and getting to know Krakoa. What's been the most exciting part about writing Firestar in the Krakoan era? Surrounded by mutants, she hasn't interacted with him forever. He says, I think one of the most exciting aspects of Krakoa in general is getting so many characters on a level playing field. You have villains who've never tried to go good on the island alongside Academy X kids who are just happy to be alive again after their fateful final bus trip. Morlocks, acolytes, MLF members, nasty boys, civilians with silly powers, even freaking Thunderbird are all back on the table for new story dynamics. Firestar in particular is fun because it's kind of like a star football player suddenly being recruited to a major league soccer team the soccer manager knows why she's there, but all of her promise and acclaim and proven skills in the football world isn't going to mean a thing to a lot of skeptical soccer fans, let alone another soccer player who maybe wanted her spot. That is a terrible analogy, but before he got to that part, he really explains why Krakoa makes no sense whatsoever. We have all these villains all of a sudden living side by side with the, with the good guys. There's never really any confrontation out there except for Mr. Sinister. He's apparently the only villain who's decided to say bad, and we've just gotten this really boring, lame-ass version of Krakoa and the X-Men where nothing makes sense. But he's super excited about it, and that's one of the problems. And all the writers have bought into this stupid premise, and that's why we're getting so many bad stories. Krakoa would have worked better if they would have made it kind of a, uh, a prison metaphor with a bunch of different groups that don't necessarily like each other all being stuck in the same place. But no, instead we get, you know, a bunch of people that have spent decades trying to murder each other, all singing Kumbaya, except for Sinister. And then, well, there was that time where Wolverine just didn't believe that Omega Red had decided to become good. But, you know, just Wolverine was wrong and, you know, he had to go on a, a journey to find that out. But otherwise... I don't see how anybody can find this exciting when it's a bunch of people just milling about. There's no conflict. There's no anything. Honestly, you'd probably have a more entertaining you know, action story just from a CCTV camera in a fucking kindergarten. But then you get to his weird, goofy fucking metaphor here. He just poorly summarized. I got a feeling he doesn't like sports either, Doc. No, I, I'm betting he's one of those people that refers to all athletic competitions as ew sports ball. He might call um, it sports ball. Yeah, he probably does. He, he basically poorly analogized the Ted Lasso show from Apple TV, except for that show only works because it's a coach, not a player. Otherwise, you just have some weird version of the cutting edge, but with football players. Or, Man, I like you know, the cutting edge. That was a good movie. Yeah, I know. It was a fine movie, but um But, but it's, it's a stupid metaphor. It doesn't work. It makes no sense. And you can tell the man does not know sports. No, he doesn't know sports just as much as he doesn't know comics. And just as much as he doesn't know the fucking X-Men. So I don't know what he does know, but it is none of the things he's talking about. He does make one good point. Let's end it on a positive note for old Steve Fox, a very obscure writer that no one's ever heard of. They asked him. Do you feel Angelica affords you and other writers an opportunity to address fan questions and even criticism of the modern era? This is what Steve had to say. I think it's a really tricky balance when it comes to using characters in story 
to address real world concerns or criticisms about the books. When done well and sparingly, it could be a nice wink and nod. When it comes too far to the forefront, you've quite literally lost the plot in your writing just at the reader and the imagined critic. Characters shouldn't be mouthpieces for us to talk at you. He says a lot of stupid stuff in this interview, but he makes one fantastic point, and I 100% agree with Steve Fox, and I'm on board with him there. Yeah, I mean, I, I see no objection to that, except for the fact that he just kind of avoided the question. The context of the question was regarding uh, Cyclops not fixing his optic blast with resurrection. and But yeah, you, you know, he is right. He's right that you shouldn't use the the characters to to blast the readers. Absolutely. And I don't disagree with him there. But within the context of the question, he's just talking about writing around a plot hole because he's not allowed to write and fill in the plot hole. But hey, he made a good point, and that's better than we normally get on Adventures in Porte's X-Men Monday interviews normally. So I do want to say thank you very much, Doc. Do you have any final words about Steve Fox or the sad state of X-Men and Marvel Comics? Um, I already forgot who he was before we finished this interview, and I will forget who he was as soon as I stop talking. There are larger problems at play within the X-Men office. There's a serious weird thing going on there where pretty much all the X-Men line has become weird queer fanfic. I think that probably has to do with the fact that almost every single writer working for them right now is part of the Alphabet Army. It's definitely permeated into the line, and it's ruined a lot of what the X-Men have stood for for many, many years. If you aren't aware of this or you want some information on it, definitely check out this video. If you don't see it here, there's also a link in the video description.